the overall morale of taxi drivers is that taxi business is dying. In 1987, when the stock market collapsed, there was chaos, there was panic. Bodies were flying out of the building, suicides. Our industry is going through the exact same collapse. I remember very clearly that I saw a post on Facebook, a picture of another, of another, another suicide has happened. Kenny Chow. I spoke to him two days prior. He committed suicide. And I heard on his voice, his tremulous voice. I was sitting there in silence and uh, I just started tearing. It was unfair. Uh, he didn't deserve it. He was just such a good family man. My friend, uh, Nikinor Okishor, who took his life uh, due to the fact of the hardships of the industries that we are all going through. Why somebody do suicide, you know? If they, we know, see any hope, right? Nobody can stop them because this situation is bringing us to do suicide. Seven New York taxi and other for hire drivers died by suicide over the past year and a half. All of them were in financial ruin most of them immigrants crushed by medallion debt. Until recently, the taxi industry's decline was largely attributed to intense competition from ride-hailing apps like Uber and Lyft. But a recent New York Times investigation revealed predatory lenders drove up medallion prices to five times their value, creating a bubble that city officials did little to prevent. Then it popped. In 2013, medallions cost more than a million dollars. Now they can go for as low as $150,000. In just the first five months of 2019, there were 275 medallion foreclosures. That's more than twice as many during the same time period last year. The city recently agreed to temporarily waive medallion renewal fees and launched an inquiry into taxi industry lenders. But drivers still falling deeper into debt say they need more help. We talked to New York City taxi drivers about the promised medallions once held and the death of their American dream. Four years ago, I would be probably making about 350 up until 400. Now I'll be lucky if I could really get 300. Obviously I sleep less, I work harder. And it seems like seven days a week is not enough. No matter how hard do you work, 12, 14 hours a day, you, you never get there. Even I working more hours, so making less money. Even uh, I work, about, work more and more, there's no passengers. At this rate, it'll probably take me about 40 years to pay off this medallion. 28 years. 25 years, seven days. So I thought I, I owned the medallion, but the medallion owns me now. Everyone thinking to get rid of this medallion because nobody helping us, and we are not making any money. We barely making our, break even our expenses. I purchased my medallion back in 1990. When I bought the medallion, my broker told me, this is the best field to invest in money because this never can be betrayed. And back then, you know, young, with full spirit, thinking to myself, this is the way to achieve my American dream. I wanted to keep the medallion within the family just because my father was very, very proud of owning a piece in New York City. It was an investment for the future. It had that uh, strong value to it and representation. Every time we refinance, we see nothing wrong with it. And to see that equity, been wiped out, that is the problem, that is a nightmare, because now we ended up with these humongous loans. I mean, my hands are tied, I'm going to war without a weapon. I'm almost three months behind my payments. I just recovered from pneumonia. These government banks uh, from the credit unions are harassing and going after owners to pay this debt. A lot of these guys took out money from their medallions connected to their homes they are cornered to the fact that they have to work these 12, 14 hour shifts in order to make the payments so they don't repossess their homes. With so much of uncertainty, even 
banks or credit unions, they're not willing to lend or refinance unless it is in a higher interest rate. A lot of us drivers just feel like we just became tax collectors for the state now. The city needed to draw the line. They needed to say, hey, look, the value of the medallion is going up. We're auctioning off medallions. We need to protect them. But to shoot it up to $1 million and then have it collapse to what it is now, 170000 destroyed the industry. The city heavily regulate the yellow taxi industry. They cap our numbers. They set the fares. How come they don't do the same with the others, with the apps corporations? They have to come forward to protect our right. They have to make sure everybody is making make money to live for a living. You know, you do, you do the best you can, not only for yourself, but for your family. And as my dream still is to make a great Americans out of my kids. So how we can survive, how we can, how we can raise our kids. My elder daughter, which is, she's very brilliant. She has this, uh, this uh, certificate when she graduated from the high school. Imagine if I unable to send them college, right? Unable to pay their fees. So their, their future can be dark too, not only my, my kids future can be dark too, you know? My wife, she doesn't serve this. Neither my kids. I want to get married and I, I, I want to have kids, but of course having this hang over me has never been that easy. I have no choice now but to, you know, take this train all the way.